Rather little uh, is known about him, and he has a complex network of companies registered in Singapore, one in the Isle of Man. Many have struggled to see how he can really make a viable business of British steel if Tata can't. He admitted yesterday his plans uh, were undeveloped, back of an envelope, he said. So earlier today, we managed to get half an hour of his time to talk through his vision and his business. A key factor in any deal will be whether a prospective buyer can actually afford to run the Tata business. So I asked him how much is his existing business actually worth? My alliance with my father, so my father's businesses, my businesses, which I'm allied on, are currently worth about a billion dollars. A billion dollars. And a billion dollars, does that give you enough financial muscle, well, to take over a steel business that's losing, uh, you know, maybe two uh, or more million pounds per day? Well, we, would not, we will not undertake the exercise if we cannot make a case where we don't lose money. Uh, that is very clear. We will make we will make a proper we will make the analysis and we'll make a business plan, and we believe it can be made profitable. And if it can, then we will undertake it. And also, we'll, the business plan will be shared by with all sh uh, stakeholders, not least my own, which all have to sign off and buy into it. It will also be shared with all all the other parties like the government and uh, Tata. I mean, a lot of we've encountered some degree of skepticism that this purchase of Tata Steel's UK operations some skepticism that this can be made to fly. I think skepticism is natural when a business has been losing this much money and it's not been able to be made profitable despite, despite a lot of effort. The skepticism is natural. But my point is that the reason is exactly that. The reason, if it was just a question of money, then it would have been solved already. Tata has enough money. The point is it needs a new model. It, there is something wrong with the fundamental model rather than just a question of resources. Mm. And how much money do you think the taxpayer needs to give you to make it work? I mean, we, the government cannot give any money anyway because it's against EU regulation. So the, even if they wanted to, they would not be able to give any money or the taxpayer give any money towards this because uh, it won't pass EU regulation. Can I ask if you're a... You're what we need is, what we want... What we want is we want resolutions to the issues. We don't want to take over liabilities. We want the liabilities resolved before we take them. And we need a solution to the power price. OK, so that's a very crucial thing you've said there. When you say you don't want to take on liabilities, you mean you don't want to take on the pension liabilities of uh, the existing, existing workers. Yes, we want a solution to that. It's made clear. It's not just as any buyer who, any prospective buyer who wants to look at this will want a resolution to the liabilities. Loads of companies, I mean, 52 we've counted in the UK in the last three or four months. They've got lots of names, Natural Gas Tubes Limited, Hayes Tubes Limited. Um, they don't appear to be doing anything at the moment. Why, why have you registered 52 UK companies in the last four months? Well, we, we own, we, we own uh, something like 20 businesses in the UK. The Caparo businesses we bought, within that there is uh, probably 15, 20 companies. There's various companies all doing various things. And often you have dormant companies waiting for acquisitions or waiting for businesses to be, to be started. So this is nothing, nothing, I mean, there's nothing wrong or unusual about holding companies. They're UK companies, they're audited, they're perfectly compliant with everything. I'm not sure what discussions are. About. Well, no, it's just, it's just there's a sort of a degree of opacity and complexity that I know has made it quite difficult. To... There is no opacity. And remember, this is a private group and it's subject to all, it complies with every uh, regulation. And it's, uh, you know, it, it, all these companies anyway, at least in the UK, are all, all, all accounts are all registered companies' houses. It's public information. Indeed, it's sir. a private company. It does its structures at the best possible way for it to organise itself. But all this information is available publicly. Can we talk about what's happened in Scotland? And, and, and what the indications there are there. You've taken over two plants. That is correct. Can you throw light on the mysterious transaction? I know you bought it from Tata, but the Scottish government owned it for a sort of half an hour or some very short period between. They bought it from Tata, you bought it from them. What was the purpose of that complicated transaction? No, it was the Scottish government very helpfully acted as the middleman, the broker. So, what, but so what, what did the Scottish government, what did they do by buying it and then selling it to you? We didn't negotiate, we didn't negotiate the deal bilaterally. It was a back-to-back -back deal. The Scottish government negotiated the deal with Tata and we negotiated it with the Scottish government. Did they take okay. any risks? Did they, for example, take the pension liabilities away from the company before giving it to you or selling it to you? I mean, is there something that the Scottish taxpayers... There was... Have... There was different versions negotiated but in the end what was finalized was a clean back-to-back -back deal they took no risk there is 
a very bad experience in not too distant British memory of Rover, which fell out of business. It was put on the market by BMW who owned it. A buyer came forward. Everybody wanted the buyers to, to make it work. They, uh, they took it over, got a lot of help. The government promoted their purchase of the company for £10, and then it failed several years later, leaving everybody much worse off than if perhaps it had failed earlier. I just wonder whether the British have been stung by that experience and maybe whether they think that, or many will fear, that the same is going to happen here, that you will take it over, we'll hope that you can make it work, and somehow at the end of it all, uh, it'll fail in a few years' time uh, rather than now. Is that, is that the prospect, do you think? for steel in the southwest. Any any buyer who comes forward, the business plan they come forward with should be examined very carefully because this business has not been not been easy and it is not an easy environment to make money in steel. It's been so you know to the turnaround plan must be something which is different to what is already being done.